Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Bach's double violin concerto in D minor. And I'd like to go through this famous masterpiece, exploring how the music's put together. I do believe that having some understanding of structure in music can greatly aid our appreciation and enjoyment of it. That's why I do these videos. Um, now, Bach wrote this probably around about 1730, whilst he was in Leipzig. And like his other concertos, Bach here has taken um, existing forms um, perfected by Vivaldi in uh, Venice, and he's kind of done his own thing with these forms. Vivaldi in his concertos uh, standardised the scheme whereby you have, uh, in the outer movements of a concerto at least, these repeated ritornelli, these melody, which uh, keeps coming back throughout the movement, which gives the uh, movement unity. And they could come back in, uh, in different keys, but always the same tune. Um, and interspersed between these uh, refrains, these ritornelli, you will have contrasting sections for the soloists, where they maybe introduce new ideas uh, or develop existing ones. So Bach takes this Ritonello structure from Vivaldi and his concertos, but he kind of barkifies them, if you like. He, um, particularly in the double violin concerto, it's just filled with dense counterpoint. So the violins and the orchestra, the solo violins and the orchestra are continually weaving in and out of each other in their lines, chasing each other's motifs, each other's ideas, weaving in and out of the, uh, the texture of the piece. And uh, we see this perhaps most noticeably at the beginning of the first movement, which begins with the second violin, the second violins, I should say. And uh, in this A section, I call the Ritonello A, we have this tune. First. So that's the, 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 the ritonello that keeps coming back time and time again. That's what I call section A. And by the way, you can follow the form for each of the movements more clearly and more closely in the description underneath, particularly if you have a score. Uh, this opening ritonello is really like a fugue. And like a fugue, we have count, we have a count, we have counter subjects, uh, etc., all going on at the same time. Such a busy opening to this concerto. Then we come to the first episode, uh, which I call B. Um, and we, we have this idea, a new tune. And then the second violin takes over with this uh, counter subject in the first. So, this new idea, note the crossing of strings here, quite um, a memorable uh, melody. We then have a transition, which we hear later on in the movement as well. This idea where we, we're moving to another key. And so on. And that transition takes us back to that, um, that tune again, the B section, but in a new key. So on. And then that takes us back to the ritornello again, A, this time in the dominant key, A minor. Have a new episode which I call C, which I which I is more developmental in nature, um, and we have these arpeggios. Uh, 
so listen out for those. We go back to the ritonello again, uh, this time in the bass, listen out for it. And then uh, we hear that C uh, section again, that new uh, arpeggio idea. And then we get to that transition we've heard before. Nice symmetrical way uh, we have B go back to that uh, idea back in D minor the home key uh, and finally in the last four bars we hear the written LO one last time uh, back in D minor And then we have a T.S. de Picardie, finishing the major. A sense of hope, uh, a sense of something changing in the course of this music. Um, a rather lovely chord to end with. The second movement of this concerto is justly famous, such a beautiful piece of music that the solo violins just soar in this movement. It's really wonderful. Um, and it's so lyrical, so tuneful, um, rather like an aria. And you could argue that the structure uh, is an internal reform, ABA, similar to a da capo aria you might find in an oratorio or opera of the time. We begin um, with the second violin in F major. We're in F major. Uh, it's lovely um, melody. And then while the second violin comes back, we have this idea in the first. We're into a uh, minor tonality now, we have this new idea. subdominant B flat major. We hear these closing ideas. And this A section just is made up of this long, beautiful melody, very difficult to subdivide with these subsidiary ideas as well, which I've just outlined. The B section really develops the ideas we've heard in the A section, um, particularly that, that gorgeous melody. Um, begins like this. We've changed key, we've modulated, this B section's full of modulations. And then we reach this exquisite climax. Uh, which goes like this, um, so full of passion and emotion. You have uh, that figuration we heard as an, an accompaniment really in the, in the A section, 
but um, this time with a new dimension. to tears the, the central section of this beautiful movement uh, and then we have a return to that glorious melody back in F major etc uh, a bit shortened this time to give a religious illusion it, you know it's, which Bach might appreciate you know it's like the, in the Gospels Christ has this uh, this garment woven of one piece uh, just before he's crucified and this is a movement just woven in one piece and it's so beautiful. With the finale we're back to the dense counterpoint of the opening movement, the Vivace, and um, it's tremendously exciting. Like the first movement we're back with this ritonello form where we have this repeated refrain uh, which runs throughout the movement played by the whole orchestra and we have these contrasting episodes with new ideas and developing existing ideas played by the soloists or accompanied by the orchestra. But what's great about this movement is the, uh, the way the two violins chase each other. Um, they're often playing a beat apart and it's, it's this, restless, uh, this restless feel to the music. Um, the ritonello is like this. This kind of imitation, almost strict, not quite, but really exciting. Then the first violin comes up with this new tune in the in the ritonello, the A section. this kind of fanfare like idea etc such thrilling music and then uh, at the end of the ritonello we have and then the first episode the B section uh, we have this idea again the two violins in imitation so on. We have returned to the uh, ritonello and this time Bach tacks on this uh, great bit where the violins are playing these double stepped chords. To the B section again. We then have a very short statement of the ritonello before we go to a new idea uh, in the C section within the uh, maze of counterpoint this melodic idea comes out uh, so listen out for that and uh, we have returned to A a return to B for the last time, a return to C for the last time, and then finally we have A uh, to round the whole concerto off. So that's Bach's double violin concerto in D minor. Please check out the form which I've written below in the description. Uh, if you're like me and you like to follow the music closely with a score, with the bar numbers, please check that out. If this is your kind of thing, please click like and subscribe. And if you've got any pieces you'd like me to look at in the future, please put them in the comments and I'll do my best to get round to them. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.